In this video we're going to look at food chains and food webs and introduce a lot of new key words. So let's start off by looking at a basic food chain. We've got some grass which is eaten by a rabbit and the rabbit which is eaten by a fox and the fox which is eaten by an eagle. The organism at the beginning of the food chain is called the producer. A producer can be a plant or an algae and they are called producers because they produce their own food, which is glucose, by photosynthesis. All the other organisms in the food chain are called consumers. The first consumer in the food chain is called the primary consumer. Primary consumers are normally herbivores. Herbivores are organisms that only eat plants. They could also be an omnivore and that eats animals and plants, but often they are herbivores. The second consumer in the food chain is called the secondary consumer. And the third consumer is called the tertiary consumer. The secondary and tertiary consumers are mostly carnivores, animals that eat other animals. Again, they could be omnivores, whereby they eat animals and plants, but often they are carnivores. The arrows in the food chain show the direction of energy transfer. The arrows therefore point from the producer to the primary consumer and so on. So the direction of the arrows are really important. You can see the energy is being transferred from the grass to the rabbit and then from the rabbit to the fox and then from the fox to the eagle at the end. And food chains are normally only four or five organisms long. And this is because food chains rely on that energy being transferred from one organism to another. And energy is lost in a number of ways as you move along the food chain. And if the food chain was longer, there just wouldn't be enough energy left to be transferred. So energy is lost at each stage because energy is released by the organism for movement. Energy is released by the organism to keep warm. Energy is also lost due to waste, for example, faeces and urine. And that can't then be passed up the chain. And also some parts of the organism can't be eaten. So that energy is not passed along the food chain. For example, the fox might not eat all of the fur of the rabbit and therefore that energy stored in the fur cannot be moved up the food chain. And similarly with the eagle, again it might leave parts of the fur of the fox or it might not be able to eat some of the larger bones. So in that case the energy stored in the fur and the bones can't be passed up the food chain. Some animals in the food chain are prey animals. They are captured and eaten by other animals. For example, the rabbit is an example of a prey organism. And some animals are predators. Predators capture and eat other animals. For example, the eagle is a predator. Now often things aren't as simple as organisms being linked together in a food chain, because if it were, they become really vulnerable because if one of these organisms died out due to disease, then the whole food chain will be affected. So instead, what you tend to see is that animals and plants are linked together in a much more complex food web. So if we build this food chain into a food web, we might see that also the eagle, as well as eating the fox perhaps, it actually also catches and eats the rabbits as well. And that leaves the eagle much less vulnerable because if all the foxes died out due to hunting or disease, then it could switch its prey to the rabbit. The rabbit might not just eat grass, the rabbit might also eat wheat or other cereal crops. And that perhaps is also eaten by mice, for example. And perhaps the mice are also eaten by the fox and the eagle. And then perhaps the mouse doesn't just rely on the wheat, perhaps it also eats blackberries. And maybe the blackberries are also eaten by blackbirds. And then the blackbird 
might also then be eaten by the fox. So we end up with this very complex interaction between plants and animals. And I'll go into more detail on food webs and how they can be disrupted in the next video. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video, then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at gccrevisionmonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.